Hi, I'm Michael from Hunts Photo and Video. I'm going to talk to you about long exposure photography using view neutral density filters. I like dynamic images. I love taking pictures of ordinary things in unordinary ways. I like images that stimulate the imagination. I like images that speak of feelings and emotions. So when I go to take a picture, I ask myself, am I simply willing to take a visual inventory? Or perhaps do I want to use a technique like long exposure to start a narrative that the viewer's imagination will finish? So how do we get into the mindset of neutral density filters and long exposure photography? Well, you can say it's all about contrast. Well, yes, it's about light versus dark. But more than light versus dark, it's about the contrast between what is sharp and what is detailed versus what is blurred and what is smooth. Now in this picture right here, we have a five minute exposure. Now in five minutes, the clouds up above are, are blurred. The water is totally smooth. Of course, the pylons in the pier are nice and sharp. This particular image, I used a much shorter shutter speed. I needed to blur the water just a little bit, just to add a little bit of etherealness to it. But I didn't want to go so long as that I blurred the clouds because I really liked the way the clouds looked. So how do you know how long a shutter speed to use? And which neutral density filter to pick? Well, let's take a look at these. Here we have no filter. Here's three stops. Six stops, we're kind of getting there. At 10 stops, we're getting the look that most people associate with neutral density filters to achieve you know, long exposures, that, that really smooth, watery look. But we can go more than 10 stops. In this picture, I'm going to take the same picture at 16 stops, which is going to provide me with a five minute exposure. Now before I do that, a couple things I want you to keep in mind. One, when you're doing more than 10 stops, you're really doing it for the clouds. And if you're going to do the clouds, of course you have to have some clouds, but optimally you want like a 20 to 30 percent cloud cover. It depends, and it also depends on how fast they're moving. I also want you to keep in mind at the pictures, because I'm going to show you this picture, I'm going to show you filtered at 16 stops using a 10 plus 2, 3 two three stop filters from view and I want you to see that how color neutral they are because there's been no processing done. So here we go. No filter. 16 stops. So I'm going to back up again. No filter. 16 stops. Now if you look at the 16 stops, like I said I haven't done any processing to this. My, my colors are fairly neutral and of course I have the silky smooth water and I've got quite the movement in my clouds. Now I just was talking about the color neutrality of the view filters that I use. That's why I use view because of uh, all the ones that I've tried over the years, the views have the, are the most color neutral I, I've used. Here I'm going to give an example. The picture on the left is no filter at all. And you notice that on the picture on the left I've got green grass in the lower left hand corner and I've got you know, blue water and kind of fairly neutral gray clouds. Now the picture on the right is taken with a cheap 10 stop neutral density filter. I'm not going to say which kind. It's one I bought years ago and I don't remember anymore. But it has definitely a color cast to it. Look, my clouds are pink, magenta. My grass looks like it's it's dead. So when you go to when you think about buying filters, if you made decisions based on getting a good camera and getting a good lens, you want to also make the decision to get yourself a good filter to put on in front of that lens. So we we look at getting filters, we have three classes of neutral density filters. First we have the variable two to eight stops. They work somewhat like a polarizer. Second class are the fixed filters, the 10 stop fixed screw on. And then the third one, which is the one that I use, is the 100 millimeter square filter holder and filters. So I'm going to talk about the benefits of all three. Let's start with the variable. Probably the best thing about the variable neutral density filter is that it's ease of use. It screws on the front of your camera. It rotates just like a polarizer. Most cameras are able to focus through the filter and they're able to meter the light correctly through the filter. So you can use program or aperture priority as such. What is not uh, perfect about them, I guess, is that they say that they go to two to eight stops. Usually, they, my experience has been I can only get about six stops of ND out of them. But six stops is all I need sometimes because, like in the picture on the right here, I needed to get just a little bit slower than I could so I could get the ghosting around the rocks at six seconds. 
I didn't need 30 seconds, I didn't need 5 minutes, 6 seconds is exactly what I needed and the the variable was quick. I got to the spot, I'm losing light fast, I put the filter on, I take the shot, away I go. Now with a variable ND, and they do rotate like a polarizer, if you rotate it too far under certain conditions, the middle of the picture can go dark, just like this. It doesn't mean that the filter is bad, it just means that under those conditions you can't rotate it that far. Now notice that the shutter speed here is 9 seconds. I took the picture, looked at it in the back of my camera and said, okay, I need to rotate it back just a bit, so I did. The resulting picture, this little bit of post-processing, but you see I've got even illumination across the picture. It only went down to 8 seconds. So I backed it off just a bit. It worked perfectly. It gave me the sh shot just as I wanted. I got my smooth water, left my clouds intact in the sky. So what are the variables best for? Well, as I mentioned, I think the variables are best served when you are at fast-moving water and you are close to it. Now here, I'm using a variable again, and as much as I might have liked to have blurred the water just a bit more, I was under restraints because I had a light breeze that day, and those branches in the background with the leaves on it were swaying ever so gently in the breeze. So if I used too slow of a shutter speed, my leaves would have been blurred. So I had to find that that perfect place where I could get my water looking nicer but not blur my leaves, which was the variable ND allowed me to do that, simply rotating it like a polarizer, taking a few pictures, and getting the one that did the job for me. Now we get to the 10-stop fixed screw-on filters. Yeah, I say most popular here, it's not the one that I use the most, but for many people this will be the first filter they should buy because it's, well, I'll tell you why. It is enough, as you saw earlier, to blur most water. Now here, I'm. this is the ocean water, and this is taking a Narragansett Bay. I've got the tide coming in. The tide's actually breaking on these rocks in front of me at about 6 or 8 inches. My camera's actually on a tripod in the water at about 14 inches above water level. And the 10 stop was just perfect to give me this otherworldly look that I was after. 20 second exposure. Here, I'm showing you 10 stops again. And you're saying, well, once again, that the water's not as smooth as I'd like it to be. Well, you have to understand that the tide was coming in here, and my waves were at 12, 14, maybe 16 inches at times, crashing up on the beach. Now, that was a completely different picture. I really wanted the, the flat, calm, serene look for the mood that I was after for this picture. So the 10 stop gave me 30 seconds and gave me the image that I was after. Now we move up to the last category of neutral density filters, which is what I use and which has got me so excited about neutral density uh, filter photography in general, is the filter holder that can hold the drop-in square filters. Now the view system is filtered here. This is my personal system. I've got the holder in the middle. The holder comes with two adapter rings, as you can see. The view gives you an adapter ring for both 77 and 82, as uh, the pro lenses these days come in both sizes. If you have other size thread for filter sizes, you can get adapter rings to put them on those as well. So you can probably use the filter system for any lens in your bag. Now I have three drop-in square filters. I have a 10 stop and two three stops. So of course I can do 10 stops, I can do the 10 plus one of the threes, I can do all three together, I can do like any combination, you kind of have the idea. Uh, really, I usually use all three square ones together at 16 stops. That's my sweet spot of 16 stops of five minutes. Now up in the upper right hand corner you see a round filter. That is also a view filter. That is the view circular polarizer. And this is, is unique and uh, really nice about the, the view filter holder is that circular polarizer can be used in the holder along with the square drop in filters. So we look here. I've got the holder on a lens. I've got a view neutral density graduate a filter on there which is dark at the top and and goes to clear at the bottom so that you can darken up the sky without affecting your foreground. Now with that filter in the holder if you look at the back of the holder where it says rotate that is my circular polarizer. So the view filter system is allowing me to use a circular polarizer and use a graduated neutral density filter all at the same time. Very nice. So 16 stops I said is is where I like to be 16 stops gives me that great look to clouds. It, it gives me pictures that cannot be seen, almost not even envisioned by the human eye. So here we have a, a simple picture, but 
the clouds are the star of the picture and of course the ocean water down there is, is nice and smooth 300 seconds I have found after shooting for a year or so doing this that I'm I always shoot at 300 seconds or five minutes I have a cable release into my camera I just have it set at five minutes and my exposure is either f10 f11 or f13 easy to take pictures so here we go again I'm at f10 ISO 100 now in this picture, see the top of my picture is quite dark. I had storm clouds up there. And of course, uh, storm clouds are always exciting for me to take pictures. And the clouds below are light. And I, I took a video that day as well. In the video, you can see that the storm clouds are actually moving in a different direction than the clouds underneath next to the horizon. Now I did do some post-processing on here to lighten up the water so I could have the, the contrast of the light water versus the, the dark parts in the image. So when we're using 16 stops, what do you have to know? Well, if you're using a digital SLR and you've got a viewfinder in the back, you cannot allow light to enter that viewfinder during your long exposure. If you've got a camera with a, a closing viewfinder like the one pictured here, you close it. If you haven't got that, you take gaffer's tape and you put it over it. Now gaffer's tape is something that is light tight and it also will not leave any, leave any sticky residue on your camera. If you leave that open, this is what you get. You get light leaking in the back, you get a ruined picture. Now the same thing applies for the front of the camera. There is my holder with my three filters in it. You notice that there is empty space between those filters. If I have direct sunlight shining down in between those filters, I get this. So what I do is I, I put gaffer's tape all around that and I just leave my three filters in there all the time because it's 16 stops as I said is my sweet spots where I like to shoot. So each has its benefits which is best of those three filter systems. The variable, no holder required, screws on the front of the lens, it's intuitive because it works like a polarizer and as I said on most cameras these days the camera is able to focus and meter automatically through it so it's the easiest filter to use. The cons it probably can only really get up to about six stops so you're going to be able to blur fast moving things a little bit but you're not going to be really get that glassy look to the water. As we get up to the 10 stop fixed once again it's just a screw on filter. 10 stops is usually enough to give you the look on water that that you are wanting and desiring. The cons is 10 stops will not give you long enough exposures to blur the clouds and once you get up to 10 stops neutral density your camera will not be able to focus through that filter it will not be able to meter properly so you're going to have to take care of focusing and metering manually and then the 100 millimeter square filter holder and filters the pros it is by far the most versatile I've got a full range from 3 to 16 stops that I can shoot depending on my desire for the type of look I'm, I'm after for my image the filter holder can be adapted to many different lenses. I can shoot long exposures from 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters on full frame in my bag. I can blur water, I can blur clouds, I can uh, get about any effect that I would want. So what are the cons? Well, it requires some work. Very long exposure times require everything in the camera to be done in manual. You will not be able to focus through there. You'll have to focus first and leave your focus in manual. You'll have to set your exposure manually and then take the picture. And of course the last line there, the extremely long exposures are going to require that you not allow light to enter in through the eyepiece if you're using a DSLR or to get in between the filters in the front. So with that, I'll see if you have any further questions on view filters or long exposure photography. Feel free to visit any of the Hunt's Photo and Video 8 locations in New England or feel free to visit Hunt's Photo and Video.com on the web. Thank you.